Hello and welcome. This video will give you a brief introduction to data visualization using Google Earth. For this video, we will assume that I've been asked to identify some areas of interest around a home I am trying to sell. For this case, I'm using the area around downtown Cedar Rapids, Iowa. First, you want to go to Google Earth. The easiest way to do this is to just Google Google Earth. The website should work on any browser. Please note, it may take Google Earth several minutes to open. In order to use Google Earth, you will need a Google account. When Google Earth opens, it will look something like this. To begin with, understand that this is an interactive web application. Google Earth will show you maps, and you will be creating what Google calls a project. The project will keep track of objects you impose upon the map. Allow me to demonstrate. If I want to search for a place, I can click on the magnifying glass and enter a place. So on my menu, I'm going to select what is supposed to be a pin icon, and when I click it, it will open up a menu that will let me create a new project. I'm going to click the name in order to edit the project name. Now I'm going to add a new feature and I want to add a place mark. And now my cursor will drop a place mark wherever I click. So I'm going to left click here and Earth will show a marker. Now that I've created that marker, I can edit it. I'm going to click on this pencil to edit it. I could change the name. I can put in uh, an address. I can change the marker. I'm going to put a little castle in there for now but I'm also going to change the color. I want that to really stand out, so I'm going to make it bright yellow. And you can see that I can fiddle with that. There are a couple of other icons I could use. There's a whole list in here. And again, I can change the name all I want. Next thing I want to do, I wanted to, I'm going to make another icon. That police station uh, marker is dropped successfully. I'm going to Add another place mark or marker. I'm going to put that right here. This is Mercy Hospital. And I'm going, I could edit this a little bit. I'm going to call it uh, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. I'm going to have two. And I'll just be silly and, oh, here we go. I'll put the sign for a hotel in there. And I'm going to make this one red because I want it to, or, well, let's make it purple. Okay. So I've got my police station and my hospital are marked. And I could add a couple more markers here, but the next thing I want to do is add an area. In order to do that, this is a cemetery right here. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to add a new feature and I'm going to add a shape. And you'll see I can be fairly rough on this. I'm going to zoom in. Because it's very easy to edit these shapes. So in order to draw the shape, I'm going to select draw line or shape. And now I'm going to click on the borders. My cursor has turned into a crosshair. Now, I am not going to be careful, and I'll show you why. I can just kind of get a general box going there, and I'm going to call this Oak Hill Cemetery, Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And let's just save that for now. And you can see that that's not really all that well done. So what I'm going to do 
I'm going to go ahead and zoom in. And now I can really edit this. And I can grab these points and get much more careful about my edge of the cemetery. can put in a uh, cemetery, put in a label, and now a couple of the things that I can do here, I can select an outline, so I'm going to go, uh, just in this case arbitrarily, I'm going to go red, and I can also uh, click a fill color, and I'm also going to, uh, let's go with blue here, light blue. And I can also say how uh, transparent I want my layer to be there. That's 100%. It basically puts uh, a color over anything that's on there. I can put on zero, which means you won't see anything. I'm going to go with 25% for now. So you can see this is just a little more blue than something else. That's kind of hard to see. Maybe let's try yellow. Ooh, I like that. Let's stick with yellow right here. So this is Oak Hill Cemetery. And now I have pin drops for the police station. A hospital and I've created a shape to show me where Oak Hill Cemetery is. When I click on these uh, items there's a description that will pop up and that's what I entered it when I edited these items. Now all along I've been calling this a Google project, but what I'm really creating is a KML file. And I want to save this as a KML file, so I'm going to export as KML file. And I'm just going to do a save as here. And once I've done that, I can click on up here, or whatever, this is browser specific, so, but it'll be there. What I want to see is the actual KML file, so I'm going to click on that if I open this file up in Notepad, you'll see that it's just an XML file. So it has tags and values, tags are attributes. And I'm sending this file either to myself when I save it in another directory or email it, or I can send it to someone else. These points that I've created and the shapes, I can send it to someone else and they can overlay it in their mapping environment. This is what I want you to send me as part of this homework. The other thing I wanted to show you is, if I get out of here, I want to hide this project and I want to open up a new one. And it's actually not a new one, it's one that I have created previously and I want to open that from my computer. And I want to look at CR Iowa School Boundaries. And what you'll see is that I use the shape drawer to draw the district boundaries for Grant Wood Elementary School and Erskine Elementary School. So people that live in the yellow area would go to Grant Wood, people that live in the red area would go to Erskine. Now this would be very interesting if you were someone who was looking in this area, and yes you can look this up, but you're gonna have to look around and find these maps. If you're a realtor, and you're providing this to clients who say, I want to buy a home in this area, they may say, I know I want to live in Grant Wood, but not Erskine or vice versa. Or they might just want to know, when I'm looking in this area here, which elementary school would my child go to? All this is, is again, a KML file that's been saved and overlaid into Google Earth. You could email this file to a client if you're a realtor. You could email this to someone who's looking for a home and say, I've got, ideally you would have all the school districts in town. 
in this and you might make those or you could probably buy them. But you can imagine the advantage you would have if you're a realtor. In conclusion, I'd like to wrap up with just a few brief points. Keep in mind, it's possible to obtain a few or many KML files and merge them. Theoretically, a professor could ask his students to each create a file and then the class could merge all their files together. For example, I could have asked each of you to map a school district in the Denver area. To be clear, what makes this all really cool is the ability to create, record, and share geographic information using KML files. An ambitious person could create simple files that show trails or safe boating routes in a nature area like the Boundary Waters. A really ambitious person could get a job or even become a freelancer and create maps of pipelines for oil and gas companies or public utilities. You could also lay out neighborhoods for a municipality or a builder. The possibilities are endless and the field is still in its infancy. Finally, this might all seem kind of new to you, but if you use a smartphone or drive a modern car, chances are you are already immersed in GPS technology. And if you've ever used or seen the apps Strava or Map My Run, this is exactly how they work. You turn on your phone, the phone starts keeping track of your latitude and longitude, as well as your speed and other metadata, and then the KML file gets uploaded to the app and overlaid on a map. I hope this video showed you a little bit about how to use Google Earth. Please contact me if you have any questions. Have a great day.